lobster you drill? Hey, yeah. Yeah, I handled a couple hundred lobster pots. What happened to all the Black Island fishermen? Died. Nobody wanted to pick it up? Well, there's, there's no real Black Island fisherman left. Allen Hall, he goes lobster in the summer, does a little hand lining in the fall. But when we went, we went to live, to eat, see? Not like that anymore. No. I don't know why I can't find that spot. No. I am retiring at the end of this month, but we will be living here on the island, as you know. You have a new minister and his wife coming on February 1st. He will be your pastor. Now, this doesn't mean that I will not respond to you when you approach me or see me or talk with me. I will respond to your call at any time, but it will be as a friend and as one who loves you and respects you, but not as your minister and pastor. Help me to do this. And God will bless our church in the days ahead, I am sure. And it's interesting to note that this encouragement it was which stimulated Antonio Stradivarius to become the wor world's greatest violin maker. Well, that's what we're trying to do here to make the music of our Christian faith radiate the music of the spheres and the holy will of God, too. That he may guide us to do it together it is my earnest prayer from now on. The past day. terms of how well you can use it. And you're going to use it only well in terms of how carefully you listen. Because how else can a word get to you? Well, initially, of course, you can talk about, oh, I heard it. I learned it that way. Or I read it. I learned it that way. Which way has to be the first way, though? Can you initially learn from writing? 
or must you initially learn words by sound? What do you think there, Miss Cabot? By sound. It has to be by sound. We have to first be able to hear the word somewhere in history. Then even when you're young, how did you first learn all the words you knew? You heard other people say that? You had to hear them. Now, if you are going to hear your language, you've got to keep your ears open. You have to concentrate. Isn't that, isn't that just common sense? All right, now, we'll go then from the noun to the, the what's next. What the noun's doing, what the noun's planning on doing. What do we call that? The verbs. The verbs. So we get the nouns on one side, the verbs on the other. We normally say a sentence is broken into two what? Two parts called what? We wanted to hear some of the music. Which one? Oh, that's it. Okay. Mm. One, two, dum, da, dee, yum. to stop feeding birds because of the rats that are being attracted to the feeding That's why I had to stop feeding birds, because the rats came. Harold? I'm being serious for a minute, though. Is there a committee or a group assigned the job of studying this dump problem and coming up with uh, specific recommendations? Well, what do you think, Jack? Are you just a new question from the town council? I'd be interested to know since I own the dump. I would think so. The answer is no. Uh, frankly, would I suggest no. that a committee be established to, to make a study of this and come up with some recommendations that make sense? Yeah, I suppose. I've talked to, at length with the Department of Natural Resources on this whole thing, and uh, they know that the situation is a very sticky and a very difficult one. In the first place, if you have a sanitary landfill, you're going to endanger the water supply on the island. Now, I don't, where the, the dump is now, it's probably not big enough for a sanitary landfill, but we thought very seriously of this about 
oh, three or four years ago, of establishing one down in that, in that uh, valley, past the pine trees at the west end of the runway, where it'd be out of sight to everybody except co people coming out of airplanes. And we were advised by people who knew a lot more than we did that, as you know, a, san a sanitary landfill means a ditch dug in the ground, refuse dumped in it, and then a, a tractor goes in and compresses it. And the act of compressing the juices out of the garbage puts them into the, into the ground, and there's nobody alive who can say definitely that we would not degrade our water supply by this. Well, then let me just, please, if you don't mind, I'll just continue a little bit. So, so far as we're concerned, having heard this, this warning, we gave up any thought of having a sanitary landfill. Uh, sure. Of course, that puts me sort of in the middle of things here, both as a town councilman and one who happens to be the president of the dump. And incidentally, I want to get together with you sometime and find out where your property is because you butt on my land. And before I do anything with the dump, and I will if the town don't, I want to know just what's what as far as your land is concerned. Because you butt on land, of, as you know, of the former owner. And I have to know where my property lines are so they can be properly surveyed, number one. And I would like to seriously get together. I'm also going to disagree with Mr. Whitman's statement that on sanitary landfill that you have to dig a ditch. You do not have to dig a ditch. That's only one method. You can have sanitary landfill right out here on the yard here, on a flat surface, if it's done and done properly and compacted properly. Further, I think that, uh, well, you don't have to believe me or anyone else. I think people know me well enough to know that I would never make a move that would jeopardize the town. And uh, I hope the dump can stay where it is, but not under the same conditions. As far as I'm concerned, it can stay. But whether I want it to stay or not, the second deity, the EPA, or a group of public-spirited citizens, as they've already proved their point on another issue, could drive it off there. But where do we go? Everybody wants to use it. Nobody wants it in their backyard. It's going to cost you money to get rid of your rubbish. And you're not yeah. going to get rid of it for nothing. Yeah. And that's no. exactly what's happening now, practically. You, it's, it's so cheap the way you're doing it that uh, you won't, don't want to consider any uh, real good method of handling the problem. I'm getting ready as the owner of the land, not as a town councilman, to lay certain suggestions before the town council. However, I have been advised by the state management council as the owner of the dump go slow until you're sure of what the new regulations are and whether or not that area can pass all of their requirements to be a town dump. In case some smart cookie goes down there and does just what you said, and they say, who owns this land? Yeah. Sue him. That's what I've done it for. Yeah, the town reaps the benefits of this without doing a thing. Mr. Moore. Jack is trying to point out that he's waiting for decisions from the Solid Waste Management Council. And when they come, then we'll have to take the next step. And Harold, I don't want you to get the impression that the council, either this council or the two preceding ones that I've had anything to do with, are cavalier about this dump problem. I know it's I'm laying awake at night worrying about this blasted thing for, for my five years in office. And I've tried to come up with solutions. And uh, we've kicked this thing around in council meetings I don't know how many times. And now we are waiting for a decision of the Solid Waste Management Council. The island is just on the edge of viability now. Just fewer than 500 people who live here all year round. And it's just about enough to keep the light plant going and to keep the, keep the airline running. Block Island plays host to perhaps 125,000 people in the course of a year. And uh, how this will all turn out, I don't know. But the island certainly is in God's hands and it's it's like a kid whose clothes don't fit him anymore. It's just bursting out at the seams in all directions. <laughs> Next year, I might just go travel or something. Take off, go to the West Coast, check the place out. How are you? Do you not get off one down very often? Yeah. Back in 52, uh, it was in April. Much as possible. It was pretty boring at times. You always find something to do, though. I just get it together. No problem. You'll see sometimes and things like that. You see these people every day. 
you know. And if you don't get along with them, you don't. There's not too many other people around, you know. Yeah, so, but like in the city, if you were uh, in mainland, most of your friends would probably be in your school. You know, here you have your friends in your school, and you have a lot of people you know that aren't in school. You, know? you grow up with a lot. You grow up with everybody all at once. Yeah. You're not just growing up with kids your own age. Because it's so small. People are a they, lot older than you. Yeah, people, people that come over here after they get out of college. That gives you everybody grows good up insight. Yeah. yeah, but that that's that's an asset. But yeah, that's what right. I mean. Yeah, but they, I don't think you'd be doing it as much as we do over here on the mainland, really, because because no, no. there's more there's more a choice of people. Yeah, everybody more stays with their own age on the mainland. And their own little thing. Their own little group. But the thing is, is just to stay on the island and have it be how it is in the winter time is going to get harder and harder when the sewer comes in and things get bigger. More people will More people. here year round. Like a couple of just can't buy a house out here after they get after they get married and have a job and making good money out here doing carpentry or something. There's no chance that you could buy a house. Uh, being, well, there's a chance. But there's a chance. No people. It costs a lot of money to live out here. It costs a lot of money just to get your hands on a piece of land. No. Yeah. Figure so ten grand an acre. Minimum. Anyways, minimal, yeah. minimal. Yeah. Plus a house. And you have to have two acres to put a house on. Dollars. Some of the people already have houses and they rent them out in the summertime and they use them to sell. The rent is so high in the summertime it's ridiculous. You can try to rent them. Retired executives. People pay a lot to get out here. <laughs> get away from. The winter residents, summer people. Feeling of. The winter residents yeah. towards the summer people. Yeah, so so. <laughs> you know, like take them in their stride because it's main yeah, uh, it industry of Park Island. Yeah. Makes they it make wild. a lot of money off the tourists, but you know, like people who work, they walk down the streets like they own the place. And, the, and they throw they ride bicycles, you know, throw like garbage all over the road. People across the middle of the road and you're back into the car and they don't move. Beat the horn. They're walking down the road with their binoculars, all these wild eyed Tori walking around. They don't know where they are. I think I don't ask like. them to move and they give you a snotty look, you know, like they're from Smart Providence. No. Refuse to get out of your way. No, that's, that, that's tough. The thing that bothers me the most is people having come out for a day at a time. people who come out for a day and will we'll, we'll put a lunch in a, in a bike that they rent and go out, sit by a bluffs, take, unwrap a ham sandwich, throw a wrapper away, eat the ham sandwich, take out a couple of bottles of beer, open them up, throw the bottle. throw bottles there, walk around. See, what a beautiful place. What a beautiful place. Unspoiled. <laughs> yeah, we went around one time. We got some money from the town council. Yeah, and they gave us all kinds of yeah, the picking gas, up picking up garbage. We all got together on a Saturday when nothing was going on. Just driving around with a couple of trucks, filling up, going to the dump. We get broken up. That yeah, day, though, it was the first day of hang gliding on Block Island, you know? All our Baptist ministers are computerized, and so they can go through. We tell them what we want in a minister, the committee, and then they run that through their machine, and uh, the first load they had was 20 out of 6,000, and none of those worked out. Then we found two or three that uh, didn't work out with us. And uh, then this chap came on the scene, and he looked good right from the start. We were very pleased with him. Right. Well, that's... Do you think the age will be something that might be a new benefit? To the yes, because he can be so much more active than we are. And there's a whole young uh, adult group. You've seen them on the island, people who came out here because they love it here, and they'd like to be able to work here and enjoy the island life and nature and the closeness of the sea and the sun and the air and all. And, uh, but they've got to have work. And uh, one or two now, last Sunday, you had a writer in the congregation. And the Sunday before, his wife sang and he played, you remember. Yeah. 
Well, he came out here to get to this kind of environment to inspire him to do his job, pretty much. Oh, I'm going to get some kale over here. Let's go around instead of going through. Now, here's 25 or so little uh, white cedars that I didn't get planted last year. So instead of getting any more of them this year, I'll plant those. Now, see where I went in. Watch where you step for your own good. The kale is up under that stuff. See? Do you always have such a big garden here? Well, not always, but in since we've moved down here, we have. <clears throat> there. That'll be enough, I guess. But if I don't cover it by the chickens will finish it off. Boy, I got some wood split just before that snow came, and we've been lucky. It's been quite a snowy winter. Yeah, we've never had anything like this. Now, look, there's, car there's uh, lettuce just coming up in the middle of winter. See? But the parsley has frozen, <coughs> but the roots haven't. So we'll get a... Now that we can get in, see, we'll cut all this stuff off and we'll get all new growth from the roots that are down there, because that's all soft. That's it. Yeah. Now, this is comfrey. That's an herb, which is very good if you have stomach troubles, which we don't right now. Do you think most island residents uh, really appreciate the environment, or is it something they've just gotten thrown into? No, they really love it. They really... One of the problems with people getting old is that they don't want to... Yeah, you're getting in, <laughs> you're getting in deep now. They don't want to go off the island to die. They, uh, they want to live here till their last breath, if they possibly can. Our kids' stuff and Christmas stuff, we've got to get out of here. Boy, this is filthy up here. See, these are the bells here. Mm -hmm. And they're set so that they won't get any water in, in most cases. Now, um, if we could open here, I don't know as I can open it. <coughs> well, maybe we can just... Well, you can. I'm just not strong enough because I've got no right arm. I can see pretty good from here. Yeah, well, see, from here you can look all the way up the shoreline. Mm -hmm. And you can even, as tall as you are, you can see the airport probably. <laughs> Did you ever use area up here? No, just to store things in. This particular room had scout stuff in it for a long while during the summer when the kids weren't using it and so on. The airport's out across here. pretty steady all day long now. When does it start picking up the summer? Oh, right about now, some of the uh, people with summer homes will start coming out, gradually opening their places up. 
as soon as there's no more danger of freezing pipes. The keel dropped right out here, about straight out here. I've seen it three or four times. It's in about a foot and a half of water at low tide. Now at high tide, you're wasting your time. Well, it's at about 50 yards from here. Around there, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. See that big rock is? I believe it's over from there and in a little bit, right over here. About uh, 35 yards. Right there, inside the rock. Guys over there. Well, one is a guy that wants to buy my keel. Uh, gentleman, the green is a friend of mine from New York that flew up to help me. Uh -huh. And the other gentleman is a gentleman uh, who lives here locally on the island that uh, I have um, been working with to uh, take some of the fittings off the boat. Hey, Mike. That's not going to work. There's a through bolt underneath. You got to hold the through bolt to get that off, right? How did you get up there? Uh, well, but I uh, about to 400 yards down the way here, I scaled uh, one of the mountains. In my first experience, I scaled the mountain and ran into an electric fence. Up there, got quite a shock. I almost got stampeded by a herd of steer. That was within the first hour of getting on Block Island. Getting the boat off the shore, it could have been saved in the first 36 hours, but um, it's very difficult to mobilize people. I've never seen anyone that was so completely geared into money. I suppose that uh, it's a tourist area, three months of the year, so their attitude is uh, get every single last dime while you can, and uh, my God, they certainly do. Yeah. Where was he coming from? Uh huh. Oh, I see. Any ideas on how you might do it? Just, I don't know. Can we get any closer than this? Yeah. I guess we can walk down the uh, gully there and along the. Is, the is, over there. is he down there now? Yeah. He should be working on the salvage with his parents. Uh huh. What is the contact with the, with the, from between here and the ne next rock? Well, there isn't really any, you know, it's just uh, across the, uh, across the cliffs here. Uh, you know, the biggest problem getting the stuff up the, uh, up the bank. The first, uh, three or four hundred feet is going to be the toughest part of this whole problem. You get yourself in a hell of a mess by the looks. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm Lou Gaffet. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hi. When did this come ashore? A couple days ago? Uh, yeah. Actually, about three days ago. Yeah. Biggest problem was getting it out of here, I guess, huh? Um, yeah, the trucking service, right? Yeah, yeah. I have a flatbed trailer, 32 footer. A tractor trailer? Yeah, right, but that's probably more than you need. It's only, uh, my only, uh, the frog really is in the mass itself. It's about 35 feet long. Yeah, right. And I'm not sure how much overhang you're allowed in the turnpike. Oh, yeah, right. You know? Well, my truck would be mostly on the island anyhow, you know. Pardon me? My trucking sure. would be on the island anyhow. You'd have, sure. you know, I could get it down maybe to the boat for you. And then after that, you'd have to, you know, you'd have to make some other arrangement, I guess. Well, I make up from New York City in four hours. To my place, exactly. Yeah, so you're talking four hours to New York, almost. Is that long case Three hours. City? Well, it's, yeah. was it 180 miles? Yeah. Yeah. So it's another three, four hours. Yeah. Um, if you like, I'll see. I'll see Hutch, who's the uh, the owner of the park company, and see if he'll even let us use the line truck. You know, it's uh, again, he's he's not in that business. He might do it, uh, you know, because you're shipwrecked and de <laughs> and desolate and spending a lot of time out here alone. <laughs> Isn't she a beauty? Uh, yeah. How 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 good is it? Oh, it's excellent. Uh, mechanically very good. Okay, let's go Cosmetically very bad. So what is this, this trailer designed to? Oh, we just 
it's, it's just a flatbed trailer. We're just taking off the timbers and the leftover welding apparatus and the, all the steel that was left. And it's all uh, it's all going back to uh, back to the next job. Are you all done with the flooding? No, it's just, not yet. Just, what are you waiting for? The on the barge. I don't know what they're waiting for. What are you waiting for? <laughs> More newsreel, Camel. <laughs> <laughs> New repairs, yeah. So yeah, the, stuff goes. Yeah, there's gonna be. A, I think they're gonna weld. A, something happened to the. Right. Something happened to the crane, and they're gonna weld a, weld a piece on one of those struts. But uh, we should be all loaded up today. So what is the material that you're waiting for now? We're waiting for the welder. In other words, you just, just uh, split a strut on this on the crane, and the welder's coming down there to weld it. The big thing that we have is tourism. You know, you don't want you want the place overrun with tourists. But at the same time, you gotta you have to accept the uh, you have to accept the fact that there's going to be people here during the summer. I mean, you have to eat. <laughs> yeah. it, nobody wants to go back to uh, the time, say, when I was a teenager, and my father was making, you know, like a buck 80 an hour or something, you know, which at the time was adequate to take care of the family. You know, we never starved in, when I was growing up. But at the same time, it's easier now to, to enjoy a, a higher standard of living than it was then. And nobody wants to go back to a sleepy little town. Hey, Sally! Where's the band for Champlain? Coming off now! Hey! Woo! Last 4th of July, the whole weekend it rained. That's Did right. It? That's right. I don't remember that. Sure. This is a very unusual weekend wow. because of the fact that the Four. whole week was so bad. I mean, we didn't see one tall ship. Bobby yeah. Chase running up the beach. It's beautiful. I can't stand it. The girls sitting in their old spot where they used to sit 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I just well, wish the windsurfers would start because it would be just like a regatta out here. Chris didn't catch any fish. Oh, I'll tell you one. What? We hurried, you know, I got things planted out in the yard, got the lawn mowed, I was going to turn the hose on, and I look down on this lovely big rock that I placed there to catch the drips from the faucet. Yeah. And we've got a critter burrowing under our porch. <laughs> So we're, we're, you know, we left the home, but uh, it's still occupied, right, Dick? Oh, God, it was unbelievable, a mound of earth about eight inches high. You come over and you, when you hit the island, after you run out of an island, an uh, hour, you either love the island with a passion or you detest it. And the people who find it very uncomfortable. The people people have problems. Yeah, they're depressed. Uh, they can't stay on the island that long. Now, any young couple getting off a boat and coming on to an area like this where it's peaceful and tranquil and it, it's really gorgeous, uh, if they're young at heart and mind, they're going to have uh, thoughts of the birds and the bees, undoubtedly. This is the way we go swordfishing in Flock Island. Here's an old fish market that uh, we don't have around anymore. And uh, here's the Stanley out there sighting a fish. And there's Gene Stanley up there getting ready to eye and to strike the fish. And here the fish has been struck and he's running and going to take the barrel with him. And here's the Stanley taking the fish aboard, ready for the trip home. And here's the Stanley on its way home, 
to bring us some fresh swordfish. And the way we cook it at the Highview Hotel is different than other places. We cook it fresh, not frozen. And most fish is overcooked. And uh, we uh, serve it nice and fresh. And here's the Stanley selling the fresh fish back in at the fish market. You go alone. You want something, miss? Okay, we'll be there. Like it up. I can't go on the still lagrima. But in a mafarida. See what is your Get a paper plate to say, we put them in. Good afternoon. Hey, I'm the amo. Yes, sir. Bring a paper plate to say. What you want? Apple, cherry. Okay, four cherry tart, please. And your cheek to a belly brilla no, fiamme di sogno scintilla no. Well, this he's in a he's in the furniture business. This, this fellow right here is in the furniture business. Fellow with a glass, I don't know. Other fellow there, he's in a he's in a contracting business. Oh, there's the BBB. There we go. 
the sure thing. Sure thing. Hey, Richard, come over here. This is Richard here. Although this is not the highest point on the island, I think that it is the most spectacular. And our friends enjoy coming up here because we give them something to do because uh, right over there uh, is where we practice driving the golf balls into the ocean. And the one who drives out the farthest gets uh, uh, a prize. I, I make up something rather uh, interesting. Now, you know what that place is down there? That is a tug swamp. And in the early settling of Block Island, they first, the, the ground was covered with wood, trees. And when those were all cut down, they finally uh, discovered that all of these 365 ponds they had around here, most of them were uh, peat. They called them tug swamps. And before a fellow got married over here, he had to get a, uh, uh, I don't know what do you call it, a deed to the tug swamp. Otherwise, he had a hard time to keep his wife warm in the winter. Now, in the fall, in the bird migration, the, this swamp and this swamp over here are just filled with black geese and Canadian geese where they come and stay a week and get fattened up uh, to, for their next trip to the south. Now, this building right there is my pride and joy. Now, you uh, make your trip down here in the morning, and, uh, of course, it's a little difficult sometimes when it's raining hard, and then you open your window and look what you have. A fabulous view of the island, the various the fields, the ponds, uh, even the birds. And then this, of course, is where the business end uh, of it. You lift the seat uh, there, and then you reach over into the library, and you take a book, and uh, you continue to look at the view, or you read the book, whichever strikes your uh, fancy. And when it's time to uh, uh, depart, after you've finished what you came in for, you reach down in here, and this is the sand uh, bucket that you uh, cover things over with. And then uh, later, you come down and dispose of all of the uh, trash from the uh, papers and all of those things, uh, not tin cans. And uh, that is a gas incinerator, which uh, burns everything uh, uh, up. And then you leave this gorgeous view uh, and wait and come down the next day. And it, it should go down. There she is. Goodbye. Well, there's a perfect example of what we're talking about right there. There's a man having a house built right there. He's got the stakes in his hand. They're going to put them up. There's houses being put up everywhere. It's too much. I like it. The taxes here are exceptionally cheap, to my estimation. But they're putting in sewers. They're going to have to have people tending the sewers. They got pumping stations, and now it's all going to go up. It's going to end up, I'm probably going to end up making a lot of money on this place, because I'm probably going to have to sell it, because I can't afford it. <laughs> I'll probably end up going back onto Long Island and getting a place over on the North Shore on the waterfront and getting another boat, and that'll be the end of it. We had a boat when we first came up here. That's how we found the place. We had a guy come in with a with a grinder, some kind of a big mowing machine, and he cut it all up. There's some of the stumps over there, what was left. But down here, on account of all the kids, we left that little bit. It's all blackberry bushes. They don't get they don't get through them, so we don't have to worry about them drowning in the pond. There's snapping turtles and ducks and every other thing around there. That's what makes it attractive. At least it makes it attractive to me that there's nothing around here. Absolutely nothing, right? You got people living all around you, it's just like anywhere else then. Right behind me here, there's 80 acres. 
they tell me, that they're going up for sale. They're going to build back there, so... That means there are going to be more people. And the more people you get, the more things they're going to need, and... I don't know, it's... I'm not a philosopher, but that's the way it looks to me. It's going to be just like Long Island. It's just going to keep booming and booming, and the taxes are going to go up, and it's going to be... A lot of money's going to be made here for some people, but... I don't know. I've... I've been through it where I live now. So I know. At least I think I know. But if you've never been through it, I, I guess they see a chance to make a, make a good book. And in my book, you only get one chance in this world. <laughs> and if someone offered me a million bucks for a couple acres of land, I know I'd grab it in a minute. But that's the situation. Aside from that, I can't really tell you anything. Except that it's a beautiful place. You got the pond in the back, you got the beach right down the bottom of the hill, and nobody ever bothers you. It's the nicest place in the world. I just wish it'd stay that way. Because I would, the reason I bought it was for the kids. I got eight more years to go on the New York City Fire Department, and I planned on coming out here and staying. But we'll see in eight years now. The rate things are going, all that could change. This is the layout as to where we're going to build our new motel. We have plans a 210 unit. It'll be a modern type structure. It'll conform with the architectural designs of the island. And just as soon as the sewer system is completed, my brother Victor and I shall present this to the town council and the town fathers for their approval. Mm -hmm. I foresee no difficulties. There's such a need for a type hotel of this type on the island. As you know, most of the facilities on the island are quite old. And, uh, we have sometimes 150 yachts here. You have some big ones then now? Yeah. Yes, we have a big boat there today from Houston, Texas, 107 feet long with 13 people aboard. Yeah. If we, we had the facilities here for them, they would, many of these people would stay aboard, mm -hmm. in the hotel rather, would not stay aboard, would come into the hotel and stay with us. Yeah. And there's a need for this, a, a big need for it. And we hope to start construction one year after the sewers are completed. Who's on that big boat down there? That big boat is a cattle man, an oil man from Texas. Huh. This is his first visit to Block Island. He came in for two days, he decided to stay for 10. And if we had the facilities for him to stay ashore, he would stay ashore with us. Unfortunately, the facilities we do have are limited. We do have some nice facilities, you probably know it ballads, but we run quite full all the time. And uh, it's a hot old day, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to take off now and go back to Ballard and go to work. Okay. Nice talking with you. This is my island in the sun. This is Block Island, so full of fun. This is the place you want to be. This is the place for you and me. Now they dig and they dig the whole day through. They're laying the sewers for me and you. They do it so fast and as quick as a mouse that next year on Black Island we'll need no outhouse. So if you get a chance to ride the roads, take a look what the sewer behold they're going to build it for you and me and we won't have to go to the backyard and you see now the sewer is coming to black island town it's going to take over down and then when we get there it's straight because the sewer is going to be ready in 1988 and when it's finished it's go through there's gonna be a lot of houses on Block Island, too. They're gonna sell property for you and me. They're gonna sell a yacht house for 13033 
$5 million, and here's where the sewer has its outlet. You know, <coughs> the buyer, meaning the Residents Association, was never against better sewerage. We're against this particular sewer and five million bucks. The problem was that downtown, about 11 or 12, including that one up there on the bank, commercial operators refused to take care of their own septic system. They wanted somebody else to pay for it. Well, we were lied to about what the cost of this sewer would be. One way or the other, it went from a million two to five million plus before it's all finished. We have a tax base here of 300,000. We're gonna be saddled with a debt of well over a million, million and a quarter dollars. And when we began the really concerted opposition, finding facts about what this sewer was all about, they had to shut somebody up. Well, at that point, I was the head of the Residents Association. And our members and our board said, let's get back to the people. When we did, the town council decided the only way they could shut me up, and shut the Residents Association up, was number one, to get a restraining order, which prevented me, of all things, the citizens of the state of Rhode Island, from talking to my governor, United States senators, EPA, you name it. A most bizarre and totally unconstitutional restraining order. And the judge who signed it 24 hours later realized what he'd done and lifted it. But they did leave a charge of libel. And 24 months later, with no attempt to prosecute the case, we have moved and all the principals in this so-called libel and slander case against me have been dismissed out with prejudice. Well, <coughs> We have a situation here, looking at the end of that outfall, it makes a wonderful fishing dock for that guy. I hope he gets some blues and some stripers, but not at a million dollars a pop. That's a pretty gosh darn expensive bluefish. I understand for some of people. I, I must say I do understand their arguments in not wanting a sewer. They've used all sorts of specious things like a rise in the taxes, and uh, this business about unwanted growth all over the island. This is not so. They, do, they don't want the sewer because they are here, they want us to shut the door, they don't want to let anybody else in. Their attitude is entirely different from the people who live and work on Block Island. This is their summer home. They want to sit on their decks and watch the sunset, and some of them have said so. They don't care if the commercial enterprises of Block Island go up the spout. They don't care if the hotels close because they go bankrupt. This is, to me, it's a, it's a selfishness that is absolutely consummate. I can't find an adjective big enough to describe it, although I must say I do understand it. So now the sewer is being built, and it's at tremendous cost, and it's, it's uh, I'm going to go to my grave with that, the thought of that added debt. I must say I never worked for so hard for anything in my life and I pray to God that when the sewer is completely built and when it's in operation that all this, this noise and confusion and argument and criticism about it will become history. Tides right now are preliminarily going to run five to eight feet above normal along the Atlantic coastline and 10 to 15 feet above normal on Narragansett Bay. That is a preliminary uh, forecast of high tide. That high tide occurs at 9 o'clock tonight. Of course, that high tide is also complicated by the fact we have a full moon now, and that does bring about abnormally high tides as it is. So high tide is at 9 with possible coastal flooding. We'll have results on that as they become available. Uh, new advisory on Bell should be coming into our news center at about 3 o'clock, and we'll get those results to you as soon as they become available. And right now, the average temperature stands at 72 degrees.